hope, eternal hope. Amen. Psalm 139, verse 11. Indeed, the darkness shall cover me. The prophet Zechariah knows all about darkness. You've read his book. You've probably discovered now. Uh, he, he knows all about darkness. Chapter 1 uh, of his book describes the dark clouds of divine judgment, divine wrath. Why is that? Because Zechariah's forefathers, they refused uh, to listen to the prophets of their day. They refused to trust in Yahweh. It was a dark day when Zechariah laid his eyes uh, in, in his vision in chapter 3, laid his eyes on Joshua, Joshua the, the high priest who is dressed in filthy clothes. In chapters 4, 5, 10, and 13, the prophet's ministry is faced with, with small things, insignificant things. He's faced with divine curses, great wickedness that included rampant idolatry among God's people. Zechariah describes the, the complete collapse of the nation later on in chapter 11. And then, and then the darkest of all dark days, chapter 12, Yahweh, the Lord, is pierced. Uh, the firstborn son is killed. Mourning and lamentation spread throughout the land. Chapter 13, uh, Gentiles devastate Jerusalem again. Uh, later in chapter 14, God exiles his people uh, again. And yet, in the midst of all of this overwhelming darkness, Zechariah sees the morning dawn. The mountains are bronze as they reflect the sunlight. The night is far gone. The day is at hand, as Paul says. It's a completely new day. Your kingdom come. Uh, that's our theme, this Lenten sermon series. Your kingdom come. You all know those words very, very well. You've spoken them hundreds of times thousands, maybe even hundreds of thousands of times. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. And God's kingdom does come to us. He brings it to us in Jesus. He restores it to us in Jesus. The kingdom of God comes to us in the life death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus the King. And when God's kingdom comes to us, what joy and hope there he is. Your kingdom come. Uh, we're going to continue looking uh, at this theme under the and through the prophet Zechariah all the way, all the way to Easter. Tonight we're in Zechariah chapter six, and this is the prophet's eighth and final vision. It's the grand finale of all of his visions. And in it we see the Lord, Yahweh, exercising his power, his almighty power throughout heaven and earth. It's as though the Lord is saying, don't worry, Zechariah, I've got you covered. He is the one that is in control of all things. Uh, in the midst of the darkness and destruction and death, the Lord says, I've got you covered. Lift up your eyes and look beyond the struggles of life. Lift up your eyes, look beyond the sin and suffering of this world. Uh, evil may indeed be all around us, but above us is Christ Jesus, the King, risen and ascended to the right hand of God in heaven. And God does it all for you and for me. His kingdom comes to us. His kingdom comes and it moves us from darkness to light, from despair uh, to hope, from weeping uh, to a new day of great joy. Victory, a victory is breaking forth from the eastern sky. That's what we see in Zechariah's eighth vision. The darkness is fleeing because of the dawning of a new day and the new day brings hope. Hope. Now hang on to that word, hope. Before we get to the vision, I want to introduce you to a man named Wilhelm Heinrich Otto 
Dix, uh, commonly known as Otto Dix, lived from 1891 to 1969. He was a highly accomplished and highly acclaimed German artist of the mid-20th century. Now, before that, he was on the front lines of World War I. He was a German soldier serving as a machine gunner on the Western Front, and there he saw, well, he saw what death and destruction, what the carnage of war looks like. After the war, he, he received the Iron Cross, uh, but there was no medal or talk of glory on, in battle that could erase the horrific memories of what he saw on the Western Front. And so he painted. And one of his most famous paintings is this one here. It's called the, the War Triptych. He started it in 1929, completed it in 1932. Now, in the art world, a triptych is a three-paneled piece of art, a, a center panel with two wings, and typically it's placed on altars in the front of churches. Now, these triptychs in churches uh, usually exude light and, and brilliance. They're filled with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, but you, you don't see that here uh, in this one, not in this triptych by Otto Dix. This one exudes darkness, destruction, death. Now, many artists, they have this wonderful way of, of leading you uh, to the most important part of the painting. And Dix does that uh, in this painting. We're going to focus in, zero in, on the center panel of his painting. We still see all the darkness and the death uh, here in the panel. In fact, the only living figure that you see is located on the left-hand side of the painting. It's the, the man wearing the gas mask. Uh, the mask saved him uh, from the poison in the air. In this dark landscape of human destruction, now uh, Dix wants to guide our eyes. If we look at the very top of the painting, you see the, you see the dawning of a new day. The light is beginning to, to push the darkness back. Uh, the light is stretching out against the darkness. It, it's the dawning of a new day. Uh, hang on to that too, the dawning of a new day. From the sky that's stretched out, uh, you see a series of, of destroyed bridge pylons and splintered uh, trees, and you see the frame of the bridge uh, stretching itself out into the painting. Remember, Dix is, is leading you. He's guiding you to the most important part of the painting. Stretched out on that bridge is a corpse. Stretched out from the corpse is an outstretched arm. Stretched out from the arm is an outstretched hand, and stretched out from the hand is a, is a bony finger. A bony finger uh, pointing, uh, guiding your eye. Dix wants you to see something, something of utmost importance. You follow that bony finger, you see that bony finger pointing, pointing to hope. Hope. And you say, hope? Well, I don't see any hope in this painting whatsoever, Pastor Shoddy. All I see is destruction and death and decay, hopelessness. Uh, there's no hope in this painting. You follow that bony finger, you see hope. Why do I say that? Because if you follow that bony finger, just a little bit of a blow up now. If you follow that bony finger, it's pointing to Jesus. You see Jesus. On the right-hand side of the painting, there he is. He's buried upside down within this pile of corpses, beaten by the world, uh, uh, discarded, defeated, dead. There he is. There is your hope. There is your Jesus. It's easy, though, isn't it? It's very easy to look at all of the carnage in the painting and miss the most important part. It's easy, easy to miss Jesus. It's easy to focus on the, the littered landscape of sin and shame, uh, uh, of the pain and the brokenness in the world and, and in the, on the dark landscape of our very own lives. And it's easy to do that and then to lose sight of Jesus, to miss seeing Jesus, but he's there. God's promise in the midst of darkness. 
in the midst of the dark landscape of your life is Jesus, the, the crucified one. Uh, this Jesus uh, went through hell and heartbreak. Uh, he went through anguish and agony. He went through torture and torment. Why? Well, you know. He did it all for you. Uh, Jesus hung on the cross in the darkness of Good Friday for three hours because he loves you. He forgives you. He heals you. He holds you. And he alone. He alone gives you renewal and joyful hope in the midst of history's darkest and most deadly day there's hope Zechariah knows about hope in the midst of darkness chapter 6 a wonderful chapter in Zechariah's book it begins with the prophet Speaking these words, Zechariah says, Then I lifted up my eyes again and saw. I lifted up my eyes again and saw. What did Zechariah see? He saw hope. He saw these four chariots uh, described later in the vision as the four winds of heaven. This is the Lord's Almighty strength and power uh, going forth over all the earth. Zechariah sees the Lord on the move. He also sees these two uh, bronze mountains, uh, symbols of strength. And these bronze mountains, they, they announce the rising of the sun. You see the light uh, stretching out from between those mountains. The light is pushing the darkness away. Zechariah sees the dawning of a new day. The Lord acting on behalf of his people, his kingdom coming to his people. Zechariah sees hope. And for many, for many in our world today, for many in our families, our communities, maybe even for some of us, hopelessness, well, hope is in short supply, but then hopelessness is, is this odd bag. Hopelessness is an odd bag. Unlike any other bag, the bag of hopelessness isn't full. In fact, it's empty, uh, and, and its emptiness is the burden. Unzip the, the top of a bag of hopelessness and examine all the pockets. You can turn it upside down and shake it hard. The bag of hopelessness is painfully empty. What does it take to restore your hope? Lift up your eyes and see. Lift up your eyes and see the dawning of a new day. That's a consistent message throughout the Bible. When life gets really, really dark, as it did for Zechariah, as it did for the exiles, as it does for you and for me, when life gets really dark, there's always a dawn. There's always morning coming. The Lord is on the move for his people. Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 14, verse 27. Uh, when did God deliver Israel from Egypt at the dawn of a new day? Psalm 46, verse 5. When does God deliver his people at the dawn of a new day? Psalm 30, verse 5. It says, weeping endures for a night, but joy. Joy comes in the morning. And you all know this, the last name the Bible gives to Jesus, Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, calls Jesus the bright morning star. It, it may be dark, it may be dismal, it may be difficult, distressing, uh, disheartening. It's a long night with an empty bag of hopelessness. But a new day is dawning. God's great act of dawn time salvation. There had been so much hope, so much promise. Jesus' message was, was touching uh, so many lives. His miracles so very powerful. And he was attracting great, great crowds. So much hope. So much promise. But now, indeed, the darkness covers him. The light of hope is covered with thick darkness. It had all come to what? Nothing. Nothing. The famous rabbi hangs dead. His disciples are deserted. 
in hiding. Uh, one of them, Judas Iscariot, kills himself. Nothing. Nothing but darkness, destruction, desertion, death, hopelessness. But at the dawning of a new day, the first day of the week, early in the morning, there were some women and there was an angel. And the angel says, why do you seek the living from among the dead? Uh, John, uh, John and Peter, the track meet, first track meet on Easter morning. John outruns Peter uh, to the empty tomb. He looks in and he believes. Uh, Jesus says, Mary, and Mary Magdalene cries out, uh, teacher. The Emmaus disciples uh, recognize the Christ, the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. And, and when he sees the living Savior with Mark's in his hands and in his side, Thomas exclaims, My Lord and my God. God's great act of dawn time salvation. Sin is forgiven. Uh, the grave is defeated. Death is dead. Jesus is alive. Physically, bodily, eternally. I mean, people saw the risen Jesus, literally. Uh, they didn't see a phantom or, or experience a, a, a sentiment. No. They saw Jesus physically. Funeral eulogies, uh, they often include phrases like, she'll always live on uh, in my heart. I'll remember him forever. The disciples didn't say that. The disciples never said that. Uh, that's because they saw Jesus. And Jesus had a body marked with scars. Jesus appeared to more than 500 people on 10 different occasions. Jesus is physically and factually risen from the dead at the dawn of a new day. And there's a word for all of this, a beautiful word. <laughs> Grace. Grace. Grace is the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness that is free and full and forever. Grace is the gift of power. The power to be free from all guilt and shame. Grace, uh, grace is the promise. Uh, the promise of God's love uh, to the loveless joy, to the joyless. And hope. Hope to those who feel absolutely hopeless. Grace. God's grace is yours in Jesus. God's grace comes to you when God's kingdom comes to you in Jesus. Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah says it this way. He says, his mercies, God's mercies are new to you. When? Every morning. There is light at the end of our long, dark tunnel. Because after the cross, there was an empty tomb. And the conqueror, Jesus, stands with, with the palms of his living hands outstretched, uh, offering the gift of eternal life to you, to me, to all. We sing about it this way when, when we sing Samuel Stone's uh, great hymn, uh, The Church is One Foundation. And in, in, in stanza four, at the end of stanza four of that hymn, he says, and soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Beautiful line. Zechariah's night of weeping turned to the morn of song. And in Christ, so does ours. Amen.